Hi everyone. Well, today we are going to be looking at solving expressions um, like we did yesterday. However, today we're answering the essential question of how do we solve expressions with exponents when they have multiple steps or when we have to use the order of operations. So looking back at yesterday's lesson and the day before, we talked about um, solving and paying really close attention to the parentheses and when to use the negative sign and when not to use it. Also when to, um, what to factor out. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at the same thing, um, except we're gonna have multiple steps in order to solve. So we're still evaluating or still solving um, however, we're going to be using multiple steps. Now, you can choose to use whichever um, solving process you like. If you like PEMDAS, if you like GEMS, it's your choice. They all use the same steps, just a way to help you to remember what steps to do in what order. I personally prefer PEMDAS, so I'll use that. Um, if you like GEMS, use GEMS. All right, so our first example that we are going to look at, example A, looks like this. 3 plus 2 times 3 to the 4th power, okay, or 3 with an exponent of 4. So when we look at this problem, our idea here is to remember, where should I start? I know I need to use the order of operations, because there is more than one operation to do. The operations that I have here, I have addition, I have multiplication, and I also have an exponent. So this right here tells me right away that I need to use the order of operations because there's more than one step in order to solve this problem. So I'm gonna make myself a little checklist because um, I don't wanna miss anything. Now, I remember that P is parentheses and um, E is exponents. Multiplication and division, I'm gonna do that from left to right. No matter what comes first, I do left to right. Same thing with addition and subtraction. It doesn't matter what order. If subtraction comes first, I'm gonna do that. If addition comes first, I will do that. So first, we're gonna start by looking at this problem and we're going to see that there are no parentheses. So I can go ahead and just check that right off. But exponents I do have, I see that I have those here on my list, so I need to solve exponents. Now remember, from our lesson yesterday, three to the fourth power is just like this, right? The five, it's five to the fourth, so that means the five is repeated four times. So my factor here in this problem is that the three is going to repeat four times. It's not three times four. So we have to try to remember that it's not three times four. So really this problem here, in order to solve, it's all about the three, about the three, about the three, about the three. The base is the three. So I need to solve those first. Okay, well I know that three times three that's nine. I also know that nine times three is 27, and then I have 27 times three. Well, 27 times three is going to give me, oh, seven times three is 21, six, seven, eight, so 81. Okay, so now I've done the exponent, and I can check that off. The rest of this information I'm going to bring down along with the symbols, okay? So now I have three plus two times 81. 
I'm ready to multiply. Multiplication comes next, or division. I don't have any division. So when I start on the right and I go here, the first one is multiplication. Back up, that's 2 times 81. 2 times 81 is going to give me 162 plus the 3, 3, so I get 165. So my answer is 165. I finish all the steps in the order of operations. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and look at our next example. So our next example, let's use a different color so it stands out a little bit more. Our next example that we're looking at um, happens to have more than one exponent. Okay, so we're going to have more than one exponent. And this might, um, we're going to have to apply some of those rules that we learned yesterday about what to do with those exponents. Okay, so again, I have exponents, I have a subtraction, and I have a division. So I have exponents, I have subtraction, and I have division. And I know that I need to organize my work because I am very forgetful and I need something that helps me keep track. So I need to go from left to right. That's what those arrows help me to remember. So no parentheses again, but I do have two different sets of exponents. So I'm gonna start with my first set of exponents and I'm gonna look at um, what the answers are there. So I have three to the third, again, it's not three times three. It's all about the three, and that tells me three times. Remember, this is three is wearing a backpack and carrying around three of itself. That's how it has, we have to figure out the power or the value of this entire thing. So this here is like three times three times three minus eight squared. Again, not eight times two. Eight squared is like saying eight times eight, and then I can divide by two. I'm gonna finish solving my exponents out all the way, and then I will worry about this subtraction and the division. So for now, I've just got my work written out, and I'm gonna go ahead and finish solving those. So I know three times three is nine, and nine times three is 27. And I'm going to bring down that subtraction sign. It's really important that you organize your work. Remember when we did this at the start of the year, it kind of looked like a Dorito when we were finished, a big upside down triangle. That is kind of the shape that you're going for when you're organizing your work. And 8 times 8 is 64. So I'm going to drop that down, and then I need to drop down the rest of this problem, which is divided by 2. All right, now I am ready to solve. Here's where that important piece came in with this subtraction sign. This was 8 squared, not negative 8 squared. Here we're going to end up with a negative sign or a negative number as soon as we do some of this work here. Okay, so if this was in parentheses like yesterday, the whole negative 8 times negative 8, that's what we would do. But because it's not in parentheses, we're only squaring the 8. Okay, so now I am done with exponents. I'm going to do multiplication or division from left to right. Start on the left, work my way to the right. I run into a division sign, so I'm going to back up, and I'm going to say 64 divided by 2. Well, that gives me 32. And now I'm going to subtract 27 minus 32. And that is going, I had 27 in the bank, but I spent 
$32, so I owe someone five. I owe someone $5. So just keep checking those off. So my answer is negative five. Again, I've solved all my steps over here. I don't have anything left, so everything's been taken care of. Okay, let's do another example. And this time we're gonna throw in some parentheses. Okay, so this time we'll throw in some parentheses for you. I know that these problems take a lot of paper and that's totally fine if you wanna open a Jamboard to solve them on as you're um, doing your practice work today on Big Ideas, you can. Um, or if you wanna use your whiteboard, but these are problems that you should definitely not be doing in your head. All right, so we have negative three times negative 10 squared plus 70, and that's it. All right, so in this problem, we do have a lot. We have parentheses, and we have exponents. We also have addition and multiplication. So more than one step is here. That means we need some kind of solving tool. If you prefer to use gems, you would look at your grouping symbols first instead of parentheses. That could include anything, okay? Um, so we're gonna look at this here and we're gonna start in the parentheses and do everything in the parentheses first until the parentheses disappear. So P, E, M, D from left to right, addition or subtraction or subtraction or addition from left to right, whichever comes first. So let's start in the parentheses and in the parentheses I have 10 squared. So 10 squared, I know that this has parentheses around it. However, the parentheses are not, they do not look like this. Like this over here. They do not have parentheses within parentheses. Instead, the parentheses are only to separate the 10 squared, the negative 10 squared plus the 70. So the only thing that we're worrying about here squaring is the 10, okay? So the only thing we need to square is the 10. We don't need to include the negative sign. If we did need to include that negative sign, we would be having it inside of the parentheses again. So it would be like nested parentheses. Okay, so don't let that confuse you. Um, it would look like our example that we did yesterday, like this one, but there would be more than one set of parentheses there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start here at um, our exponents because that's the first part with inside the parentheses. We don't have parentheses to worry about in the parentheses. How many times can I say parentheses in a sentence? I don't know. All right, so 10 times 10 is 100, and we still have that negative sign, so we need to drop that down, plus 70. And I still have parentheses to do. So I'm not done with those. I cannot check them off yet. I can check them off after I solve what's in here. So I have negative 100 plus 70, and that gives me, so I have a bank account that has negative 100 in it. I deposit $70, so now I have negative 30. Okay, so I am now finished with my parentheses because all that's left is just one number that is a negative. And now I just need to now, done with those, multiply from left to right. Okay, I have negative three times negative 30. Well, I know that three times 30 is 
90. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So I don't need a negative symbol. So my answer here is 90. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn my page now. So make sure that you are checking your work. Um, and when you're ready to hit, um, when hit pause if you need to. When you're ready, hit play, and we're going to do some try it. All right, so your triads for today are let me get the right ones. Remember how they always give you the like way super challenging ones um, that don't even match? Okay, so we're gonna do triad number one says two minus four times five squared. We're gonna go ahead and do that one. And then we're gonna look at try it number two. Let's give you some space here. Try it number two, try it number two says, let's do one like this, negative two times 32 minus six squared. All right, so go ahead and solve um, both of these. Hit pause so you don't hear me solving. And then when you're ready to check your work, go ahead and hit play. All right, so our first problem that we're looking at, again, we're going to start with our checklist of whatever kind you like and no parentheses. And I'm going to go multiplication or exponents. So this here says five squared, so I have five times five. Again, five squared, remember, it's like having a box, five, a five by five box that you found the area of. Okay, so five squared, you're finding the area, and the area inside that box is 25. And I'm going to multiply that by four and minus two. Okay exponents are gone. Then I have multiplication or division from left to right. So we're going to start on the left, work our way right. 4 times 25. Well, 4 times 25 is 100. And I'm going to subtract or bring down the subtraction sign. I could have read that as negative four times 25 if I wanted to and just kept the negative sign in there. Um, I have $2 in the bank, but I spend 100, which means I have negative $98. Okay, how did you do on that one? Check your steps, ask questions, Okay, let's look at number two. All right, question number two. We're moving up. Question number two, we have parentheses, exponents, multiplication or division, addition or subtraction. Okay, parentheses first. I need to start within here. I'm like doing a mini order of operations. So I need to start with exponents. This negative sign is not in a separate parenthesis, so I just need to square the 6. So this is 6 times 6. So I have 6 times 6 is 36. All right. Now I have 32, and I remove 36 from there. Um, which means that I took four extra and I shouldn't have, so I owe someone four things. All right, and we have a multiplication sign there. I have two, negative two times a negative four. I know that two times four is eight, and a negative times a negative gives me a positive number. So my answer is eight. How did you do on this one? Check your work, make questions if you have any, make marks on your paper if it's something you need to revisit. 
All right, it is your turn now to go ahead and answer your essential question. How do we solve problems expressions, expressions when they have exponents using the order of operations? So go ahead and answer that question. What is something that you can summarize? And then out to the side, go ahead and put your level of understanding. One, I have no idea what you're doing, Miss Sealander. There's just like a bunch of numbers on your paper and I'm so confused, I need to ask for help. Two, I'm kind of getting the hang of this. Uh, sometimes I'm getting tripped up on what comes first or maybe I am confusing my exponents still and I need to review those. Or three, I've got this, I know what to do. I keep solving them correctly. I don't have any questions to ask. So go ahead and write your um, summary and then your level of understanding. And then when you are finished, you can come on back to the Google Meet and ask for help if you needed it, or you may go on to your practice work on big ideas. As always, I appreciate all of your hard work and effort and make it a great day.